Hi, this is Sandra Webster. This example is going to show you how to compute a repeated measures, that is a mixed factorial analysis of variance using SPSS. Right now I've got my variable view on, my data view, not the variable view, the variable view is over here. And this time I'm going to choose to do a repeated measures analysis of variance and use one between subjects factor with it to make a mixed design. So under Analyze, I go to General Linear Model and I choose Repeated Measures. The factor that I'm going to analyze this time is the type of attitude scale. So I'm going to call it Attitude Scale. Note I didn't put a space in there because that would make it messed up. There were six different attitude scales and they all went from 1 to 10, with 10 being more positive. And I have to find them in my variable list. So first of all, I am going to sort, I'm going to display the variable names. And I know that treatment is my independent variable. That's my between subjects variable. People either wrote about advantages, disadvantages, or impacts. Impacts was level 2. I reverse coded all the negatively worded attitude statements. I made scales that would be going into the dependent variables. So there's an academic attitude scale, an employment attitude scale, a family attitude scale, a friends and social attitude scale, a health, and a productivity. So basically my question is, are there differences in these different attitude scales based on treatment. Under options, I'm going to choose descriptive statistics and effect sizes. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the graph. And so this time I'm going to have the attitude scale, because there's six of them, as the horizontal axis and the treatment as separate lines. We'll see what that looks like. OK. So here we have our design. First of all, the within subjects factors. There are six of them. The between subjects factors. There are one between subjects factor with three levels. People were randomly assigned to each of these three. Then I have the descriptive step statistics for each of the six scales, for each of the three treatments, and the total for each scale. I have multivariate tests, which don't really apply in this case because we're really looking at attitudes as a single measure, those scales. So Mochley's test of sphericity is also not relevant. But the test of within subjects effects is relevant. So were those attitude scales different? And the answer to that with five and 1,270 degrees of freedom, an f of 145.15, p less than 0 0.001. Actually, over a third of the variance with this partial eta squared are explained by the different types of attitude scales. So yes, attitudes were very different across those scales. That is a main effect for type of attitude scale. If we move down, to the, I'm sorry, let's go back up. Did we have an interaction with treatment? And if we look at 10 and 1,270 degrees of freedom, the F of 0.83, not significant. This p-value is not significant. You might as well flip a coin. And so if we looked down first before we move to that, did we have a main effect for treatment? And the answer is, in this analysis, no. So F2 and 254.04 for the F. That's not the p-value, that's the F. So if we look at the graph, it shows what's going on. And basically, it didn't matter which of these three treatments, everybody paralleled each other. Now, I do know I have a source of variance that I haven't taken into account. And that happens to be the participant gender. So if I analyze this again and make it a three-factor study, repeated measures, the same analysis, the same within subjects factor. And all I have to do is add 
my gender code gender code as a between subjects factor. If I do the same analysis, I'm going to add another graph. And this time I'm going to keep it the same. But I'm going to have separate plots for the two genders. And I run it again. The results look very similar with the difference that now I have gender in my design. And the means are twice as many because now I have the means for female subjects and male subjects for every one of those things I had before. We still can ignore the multivariate test and the multiple test of sphericity. When we look at the within subjects effects, we have the effects for the main effect of the attitude scale, those six different scales. The interaction for attitude by treatment, the attitude scale interacting with gender and the attitude scale by treatment by gender and then the error term which is the same for all of these. If I look quickly down my significances attitudes are still significantly different so the different scales produce significant results but we also have a significant interaction of gender so men and women did not react the same to the different attitude scales and we have almost got an interaction with treatment. 0.057, it's not 0.05, so it's not significant, but it's almost there. It's interesting to look at. So if we look at the between subjects effects now, we've got an effect of treatment, no main effect of treatment, no main effect of gender. So men and women on average are not different. It's only the interaction. And there's the treatment code by gender. And oh dear, we have an interaction there. I didn't get this graph out. I'm going to have to run the analysis again to get the graph to be able to understand and interpret the data better. But this is important. Attitudes towards social distancing. When you look at treatment, you have to understand gender to be able to explain them. So here we have the same graph we looked at the last time, but here it is broken out for women and there for men. And as we look across them, it's not that easy to look across all together, but basically we have to keep track of which one of these six scales we're talking about. But the third one, the treatment shows these big differences for men and not at all for women. With a three-factor interaction, we've got to look across two graphs to see it. Likewise, the academic scale, the first one, men who wrote about disadvantages are way down. Women who wrote about disadvantages are higher. We need to understand what this interaction is. And so it, basically, here's how we do the analysis. The next step is to be able to do the interpretation. Let's show you how to get that graph. So if I do the analysis again, repeated measures, it's the same analysis, but this time I need to ask for the attitude scale by gender. And I could take off the others because I already have them. Uh, this really goes so fast, it's almost like magic. So if I move to the very bottom of my bar, I can navigate straight to the new graph. And basically, it's telling us what I was eyeballing looking across them. So there are some gender differences on some of them. And it's basically this difference between the second one and the third one. And if you're like me, you forget what they are. And so you just go back up to your within subjects factor. See how I'm clicking on it in the navigation bar? Employment attitudes and family attitudes. We've got sort of a flip-flop so that the women were really negative about the employment. The men were very negative, but not as negative. 
And then family, the women were more positive. And in fact, the entire attitude scale going from one to ten, five and a half is going to be the cut point. So mostly attitudes are pretty negative. Uh, but there are some differences here. And so basically this uh, is what we need to be able to work on interpretation-wise.